Do you remember how much you wanted it to be Christmas when you were 10? How much do you want it to be Christmas? You yearned for it to be Christmas. Couldn't wait for Did you count down the days, right? Count down the days till you get out of school. So did, did you sit in front of the Christmas tree and, and did you, anyone here play with the gifts? Try to figure out what they were. Right? Then your mom shoes you out the door. Go play. But it's snowing. Tough. Go. And uh, we just we had all families have different ways of, of marking this time of, of waiting. But uh, we all wanted Christmas to show up. What did you want most for Christmas when you were ten? Think about it. Take your birthday, and I, for me, 1980, add 10 years, 1990. I looked it up. The most popular toys in 1990 were Super Soakers, which I wanted a Super Soaker. Super Nintendos, I begged my mom for a Super Nintendo. And uh, Power Rangers, which to this day I think are very stupid. But uh, I loved those other two. I wanted them, right? I really wanted those. And um, it just wa what did y'all want? A serious question. When you were 10, what did you want for Christmas? What's that? Pony? I got it when I was 12. Yeah, okay. Delayed till 12. What else did y'all want for Christmas? Just jump. What's that? A baby doll. Baby doll. What else? They come out with the walking dolls, and that's what I wanted. Wanted a walking doll. I wanted a doll. I got it for Christmas. They said, Mom, when I turned her over. And it was funny because I was supposed to touch presents under the tree before Christmas. But Mom reminded me later that whenever they said, Joanne, you can pick out a present now, I went and got that one. Mm -hmm. Because I'd already knew what she said. <laughs> <laughs> We always opened a gift the day before Christmas on Christmas Eve. And it's funny, every time we did, it was always pajamas. <laughs> when I was 10, I was still hoping it'd be something else. <laughs> You, see, you think of those things that you wanted when you were 10, right? What do you want for Christmas this year? Anything exciting? Right? Peace. If you look at your Christmas uh, list, is it just, you know, well, what do you want on your Christmas? Socks? You need some more socks? Yeah. When did Christmas lists start to get boring? When did that happen? Kind of sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Right? I, I think that's part of the reason we want to celebrate Christmas with our children or grandchildren is that that sort of contagious, that yearning, that hope, it, it sort of rubs off. But as adults, we must confess our Christmas lists have become boring and uh, just kind of, eh, right? I, I lack the words to describe what happened to our Christmas list, but I can tell you the story that it reminds me of. It's the story of Zechariah, right? Zechariah, whose name sounds like a prophet. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Zechariah, he must be a prophet. Well, he's not. He's a priest. He's a priest, and um, he, he's leading worship. We, we, we start to read, he's re leading worship, and something crazy happens. God shows up during worship. I know, unexpected. But an angel shows up during worship and, and tells him that he is going to have something, something that when he was a younger man, he yearned for passionately and desperately. He had yearned for a child. He wanted a child. Top of him and his wife's Christmas list. But by the time this angel gets to him, he is an old man. And his yearning... His, his, his hope, his Christmas list has become rather boring. Whatever the first century equivalent of, well, I guess I could use some socks, right? Maybe a shirt, I don't know. And so I think it's somehow fitting that the angel tells him, you're not going to say anything till your child is born because, well, he's kind of lost anything interesting to say anyways. His hope, his drive, his yearning is really just not, not there. Like Zechariah, I think we start to lose our sense of, of yearning and hope when we sit down to think of what we might want for Christmas. And we can't go back and recapture that, that yearning, that, that first desire. Right? I think we grew up is what happened, but our Christmas list didn't. I think we grew up, but I think our Christmas lists didn't. And we find that our Christmas lists have turned into slightly larger versions of what we wanted back then. But, uh, you know, is there anything that you can buy on Amazon that would really make you happy? Right? Is there anything you can swipe a credit card for to buy that would just satisfy you deeply as much as those things you got when you were 10? I could go out and buy a dozen super soakers. I found them last night. I was interested. And they, they sell them. They're 80 bucks now, a lot more expensive. But I could buy a dozen of those super soakers I, I wanted so badly. And, you know, it just, 
wouldn't be what it once was. What didn't grow up was our understanding of Advent and Christmas and what we put on our Christmas list. The, the sense of Advent, right, the, the sense of Advent is, is we're waiting for something to come towards us. And the most important thing I can tell you about Advent, the single most important thing I can tell you about Advent, is that it works yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Right, it's working in three levels. It works yesterday, the first coming of Advent. The first thing, the first way we celebrate Advent is we celebrate what happened yesterday. We have to celebrate what happened in the past. We celebrate that a gift was given, a child was born to Mary and Joseph, the beginning of good news, right? That's what we celebrate at the coming of Christ at Christmas. That's what we're looking towards. That first Advent happened yesterday, but then there's a second understanding of Advent about today. Right. What is Christ's last words to the disciples in Matthew? He, tell, he gives them their marching orders. He says, go forth and make disciples of all the nations, teach it, baptizing them, teaching them what I taught you. And these are his last words. And I will be with you always till the end of the age. Right. That is the second way we understand what we're waiting for in Advent, is Christ to be with us today. That is the work of the Holy Spirit to drive us to follow Jesus and to notice how walking in his footsteps we do experience Christ with us. So Advent is both looking back to what happened yesterday. A, a child was born, a gift was given. It's, it's looking at today, what happens today. Christ with us today. And it's also looking down the road, what happens tomorrow. That Christ will come in final victory, right? That the co coming of Christ, the kingdom of God, the new Jerusalem, describe it how you will. And so the purpose of Advent is to sharpen our yearnings, our desires, our wants for all three, right? The gift that we might receive gifts like the first gift was given, but also that Christ would come into our lives more fully and also leaning into the Christ that will come down the road. I think it's really important that we start our church year not with doing, but with yearning and with waiting for the first four weeks of the church year. We just sit here and yearn and desire and wait and, and hope, right? I think our Christmas list, or our list of what we're yearning for, got stalled in yesterday, right? The giving of gifts. And, and it, it reminds me of, uh, you ever go to a baby shower and try to give a gift to a kid who's got everything anyways? Right? We keep on buying gifts, the kid's got everything. Right? We, if we keep on focusing on the giving of gifts, you know, it's just, we, we need to move on and also think about that second and third understanding of Advent, that Christ comes into our lives today, and we look towards the Christ that comes down the road. What does it look for our Christmas list to grow up? Will we continue to, to celebrate uh, that Christ did come and, and Christ came as a gift and so we continue to give gifts? Right? I don't say, I'm not saying don't ever give gifts. I'll tell you what's on. There are three things on my Christmas list. I'm going to tell you what all three of them are. The first thing on my Christmas list in, in recognition of, of uh, the, that, that a gift was given, that Christ was born, I, I, I'm looking forward to my stocking. I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to my stocking. Kuhn, uh, my Kuhn, the Kuhn family takes stockings as a challenge to figure out how much ingenuity and interesting things can you pack in a little small space. I cannot wait to open up my stocking. I'm looking forward to it. But that, that's not all. There's the second understanding of Advent, right? That Christ comes to be with us today. And what does it mean to experience Christ with us today? What does it mean? What does it look like? I think it's when we're experiencing moments of peace and joy, of community, right? And so the second thing on my Christmas list is I want to cook with my mom. I want to have a family meal, and then I want to go build a snowman with Sophia. And I'm sure Fletcher's going to squeal because he's never really played with snow yet, right? So last year he saw it, but I'm not, he doesn't remember it. So that, that's the second thing on my Christmas list, right? The idea of, of Christ with us today. How do we celebrate Christ with us today and experience the good news? Well, we, we gather family, and we celebrate, and we have joy and peace together, and... Um, that's not a given for some families, too. It's not a given that every family will be able to do this. So that's, that is quite a thing to yearn for. I, I do see more and more families doing this. I see more and more families that are sort of, they're, they're not shopping their way all the way through Christmas, and they're starting to really focus on the being with each other as what, as what they're going to look at. You know, Christ, is, Christ came yesterday, and that, that's good. Let's give, do a round robin, something, giving of gifts. But let's really focus on being with each other. Christ with us today. That's a good thing. I appreciate that. It's that third meaning of Advent that our, I think our Christmas lists really need to grow up. That, that uh, 
looking to Christ to come in, in the future, the kingdom of God coming. This is where we need the prophets to help us. We need the prophets like Isaiah who, who yearns for a time when those who walk in the dark will walk in the light. Those who are burdened will be freed. Those who are oppressed will be lifted up and that which is broken rebuilt. We need to yearn with the prophet Jeremiah who calls for leaders to be found that are, that will do justice and can be trusted. Right? We need to yearn with the prophet Malachi who s looks to a time when people will be made as pure as refined metal, refined by, by a refiner's fire, as clean as the, the cloth made by a fuller's soap. Right? The prophets show us how to yearn, how to hope, how to desire. They dare us to name our hopes. And, and, and to dare to name our hopes and our desires even if they're not going to happen this Christmas. Right? That's part of the challenge. They're not probably not going to happen this Christmas. And to yearn with the prophets can get to be a bit raw. Because to read the prophets is to acknowledge that something is broken and to say that we need it to be better and it's not going to be an easy fix. Here's the third thing on my Christmas list, right? The, uh, the stocking, I'm looking forward to, the, the f meal with the family, Christ with us today. But the, the, the thing I'm asking for for Christmas that I'm probably not going to get is I really wish those who follow Jesus could all be gathered around the same table. That instead of being separated by being Lutherans and Presbyterians and Baptists and Methodists and Catholics and Orthodox, instead of being separated by that, we could be connected by following Jesus together. Right. This bothers me. The reason this sort of comes to my mind this year is because I wrote a letter this week, a letter that um, it's hard to write. I wrote a letter to Bishop Gatos, the bishop of the Jeff City Diocese of the Catholic Church, because uh, Olivia and I were a little thinking about our will. Isn't that fun, right? You start having small kids, you have to think about these things. So we were thinking about our will, and, and I've been doing a lot of funerals lately, and um, driving back from a funeral, I realized something. God forbid if one of my kids or my wife dies before me, what's going to happen is they're going to go down to the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Bevere, where all three were baptized, and that's where they'll have the funeral. Right? And if that happens tomorrow, I won't be welcome at communion. You all know how seriously I take communion. It matters. It's deeply important to me. And right now, I would not be welcome. So I wrote, wrote the bishop a letter. I said, uh, Bishop Gatos, I'd like to ask for a dispensation for something that I never hope never to have to do. On that particular instance, if I ever have to bury my family member, may I please take communion? Right. It gets a bit raw, doesn't it, to name your yearnings? A little bit hard to, to stay out loud. But when we start yearning for something big, to be a mother yearning for a, a safer word, world for her child, to be a, in a minority yearning for justice, in a just society, to be a refugee yearning for a home which they might never be able to go back to. To yearn for such things is hard and challenging, and yet, that's part of the Christmas list, isn't it? For Christ to come, the kingdom comes, when Christ's peace rules and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's all my Christmas list. I want Christians to be able to be Christian together. We resist being this honest about what we desire at Christmas, not only because consumerism trains us that we can shop our way to satisfaction, but because we are also under the pressure of inertia and cynicism and numbness. Right? Inertia, this is just how the way things are. Cynicism, anyone who tries to change it is in it for themselves. Right? Numbness, you just kind of get used to it. And we read the prophets and they dare us to dream and to hope and to yearn again. I want you to invite you to write your Christmas list. Yeah. Really. I want you to write a Christmas list. And I want you to, three things, right? Three things for Christmas. We, we don't need long Christmas lists anymore, do we? Right. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Put those at the top of a piece of paper. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday, that's when Christ came. Yesterday to Mary and Joseph, a gift unwrapped. What is the thing that would bring you joy? A gift, something you can touch, something that someone can give you and ask for that. What is today? What, what do you want Christ in your life today? What do you need for the peace of Christ, the joy of Christ? Well, what's the family gathering or the friends or whatever it looks like? What do you, what do you want for that? And can you dare to write down what you yearn for for tomorrow? 
when Christ comes in final victory, what of that do you desire? What bothers you that it isn't there? I've told you my list, right? Stocking, a meal with family, and Christians to come together. What's your list? Ask each other. Spend some time this afternoon writing your list and then ask each other about it. See what you really want. Amen.